Recent reports reveal that parents are paying up to 81% more to go abroad during the school holidays. But with the alternative being to take your child out of school and face a hefty fine, then what is the right thing to do? Well, in a moment, we're going to talk to travel expert Simon Calder. But first, uh, let's hear from father of three, John Platt, who believes children should be allowed term time holidays, and journalist Toby Young, who argues that education should always come first. Thank you for joining us today. So, John, um, we've sort of followed your story an awful a lot that you went to the Supreme Court, you lost your case uh, there. Since then, you've moved your daughter into private education so you can bypass what you call an unfair system. That's correct, yes, Holly. So, I mean, if this is an, un it's an unfair system, but would you therefore say that, you know, you're lucky enough, you're fortunate enough that you can afford to do private education, you're sort of taking part in, in it all being unfair? Well, I, you know, I'm just not prepared to be subject to such draconian rules and Children in private education or the parents of children in private education can take their children out whenever they like without facing criminal sanction. I think that should be true for all parents. I don't think that it's fair that some parents who can afford to go on um, holiday at any time of the year and privately educate their children like I can um, become exempt from the criminal law just because they have more money than somebody else. I think it's dramatically unfair. You, and, say, um, that's course, the, you say there's more, more to life than school? Well, of course there is, Philip, you know. You guys take your kids on holiday. You know how important it is. You know, parents, 20,000 parents were prosecuted last year. 260,000 parents were fined. Of the 20,000 parents who were prosecuted, 71% of them were women. You know, people know that there's a, 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 a quite a serious consequence of taking their children on holiday. All well, right. You, you've frozen there. Let's let's jump over whilst we uh, let's get John back. We've got t uh, Toby. You were listening to those comments there, uh, Toby. Yep. What um, what what do you think? I disagree with John. Um, I've helped set up four schools um, and I know how disruptive it is if parents take their children out of school um, before the school holidays begin. It's disruptive because teachers spend a long time thinking about the sequence with which to teach the particular syllabuses they're teaching children. They want to teach all the children at the same time. If one child misses out on a critical lesson, and that creates extra work for the teachers. They have to catch that child up in break time or after school or prepare additional work for that child to take home. It, it, it's not fair to burden teachers with that just to save a few pounds on a family holiday. The other big reason I'm, I, I don't think that parents should take their children out of school is that we have a problem with absenteeism in this country. It's increasing in schools. And all the research shows that if children are taken out of school by their parents, they don't do as well as those children that remain in school. And unfortunately, disadvantaged children are more likely to be absent than non-disadvantaged children. So if you make it easier, if you take away the fines for parents who do take their children out of school, it's disadvantaged children who are going to suffer. And you're going to increase the attainment gap between disadvantaged and non-disadvantaged children. So for those reasons... Do you think it would be fair to sort of say this is the fault of the travel companies then? If they didn't have these huge price hikes over the summer, this wouldn't be an issue. We wouldn't be talking about it. Well, I'm, I'm reluctant to blame the travel companies. I think there are many benefits to dynamic pricing. It's the law of supply and demand, after all. And governments, when they try and regulate marketplaces, often get it wrong. And there are all sorts of unintended consequences. I think the solution to this problem is to encourage schools to stagger their term time. Schools can perfectly easily do that. They can have children break up a little bit earlier, come back a little bit sooner. And if they all do it at slightly different times uh, and not at all at the same time, then that would solve the problem. You've got uh, the issue of the many single parents groups online uh, saying that this is desperately unfair because there are deals available for families which we can't take. And so essentially there are many single parents who are prevented from taking their children on holidays. Yeah, that does seem unfair. And, and that is something that um, uh, the travel industry should look at. Uh, I don't think single parents should be penalised because they miss out on family package deals. Uh, but I don't think that... Uh, excessive regulation of travel pricing is the solution. I think that'll have unintended consequences. Uh, it usually does. I think the solution is to stagger term times. Uh, that, that'll solve the problem.
All right. All right. Thank, thank you. So much, thank Toby. you. Thank, thank you. you. Also, thank you to, uh, to to John as well. So it's an argument that we're uh, not going to settle. Uh, Simon uh, has uh, got advice now on what parents can do to make the best of this situation. You start with something I'd not heard of before, though. So what is the Anglo-Scottish anomaly? Well, you take advantage of the fact that already in Scotland the schools are on holiday, and therefore, if you're in Scotland, the prices have gone through the roof. Um, something I was checking out to uh, Lanzarote going out on Thursday. Um, Three hundred. 80 something pounds from Glasgow, same holiday, um, 130 pounds cheaper if you go from Manchester. Because English schools still haven't gone out, but Scottish ones has, you, you can take advantage of that. And you can do the Anglo-Scottish shuffle in the reverse direction in late August. So for instance, if you want to go across to um, uh, Orlando, Virgin, uh, Virgin Atlantic will fly you there from Gatwick for about a thousand pounds return in late August. You go from Glasgow, it's down to 700 yeah, so big you can cross the uh, cross the border what about weekday holidays right well this is quite straightforward you might think it's obvious that if you go from saturday to saturday it's going to cost you more than going from monday to friday but actually you can save more per day if you do that just looking at a, a jet two holiday going from stansted to albufera staying in the hotel alpinus you've got a two thousand pound holiday for a family of four that comes down to 1452 pounds so effectively the cost per day is is reduced you're also going to avoid all the airport crowds um, and I've done tried all of these by the way I've got two school-aged children so I've done them all including the grab and go um, so most schools or many schools break up on the 19th of uh, July and the Saturday the 20th of July is going to be incredibly busy if you can just take them in the afternoon have the car running outside the school gates take them straight to the airport you're going to save well typically on an example I found from Bristol to Malaga 50 pounds per person um, just by leaving out straight away. Yeah. What's, uh, what's broken travel? Sorry? Broken travel. So when you break up your trip. Yeah. Oh, sure. Well, if, 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 in, this, in the sense of breaking up your trip into several components. So, for example, on the 2nd of uh, August, my family's going out to Athens. Hooray, we're going on a cruise. Can't wait. Except they only had three cheap seats left on British Airways. Um, the price has now gone up to £700 one way. Wow. So I have taken my... Uh, my, what I'm doing instead is flying from Stansted to Dortmund in Germany, getting a train, going to Cologne, flying from there to Sofia in Bulgaria. From there, I hop on a bus, go across to Karvala in Athens. But then you'll have to come home because you'll miss the crew. No, no, no. I'm starting <laughs> off a couple of days earlier. It's going to cost me £100 all in, and I think it will be quite an adventure um, rather than paying £700 yeah, it's a big for a saving. It is. Flight. What about no-fly holidays then? Surely they must be yeah, cheaper. Well, that, that you, you would hope so, and certainly the insurance policy for every family has to be, if you're lucky enough to live maybe in the southern half of Britain and you've got a car, just pack everybody into the car, find a cheap channel crossing from Dover or Folkestone across to Calais. Within an hour, you'll find some great campsites. Um, we've done that. It's really good, really cheap, and you're not going to pay uh, uh, peak prices. And of yeah. course, it comes back to the holiday industry. Why do they put up the prices? That's because they lose money for most of the year. And if they didn't put up the, the holiday prices or they were uh, banned from doing so, by the government, they just pack up and go home. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.